So today, because it's uh, a good time to do it as new fleeces are being shown, I thought I would show you how I grade out my fleece. So I'm using this one today, which is, I don't know if you can see that, it's a Lincoln Cross Merino, and this is the lady it's come from. She does beautiful fleeces. They're always really clean and uh, she does some lovely crossbreeds. So this is a half fleece. Now, if you're like me and your knees are a bit crabbit, then a cushion is not a bad thing. I was going to do this outside, but it's so bright, I can't see anything on the screen. It's totally black. So today I'm doing it in the kitchen on top of a big old sheet. And as you can see, uh, everything's covered up. I've got gloves on and hopefully you'll be able to see this. So I'm going to get started. So the first thing I want to do is to open this fleece out and if possible, find out which end is which. So if I look at this, this has been rolled. And as you can see, there's one long thin bit here, which has been wrapping everything else up. So you can see that it's almost like a rope. So I'm going to unroll this this way. And normally when people roll fleeces, they wrap it with the neck end. So I'm assuming that that long thin bit is the neck end, but uh, I'll have a look and check it first before I make that as a firm decision. So this is the fleece with the right side up, as in the outside of the fleece, side up. Now, if I look at this as a, a fact-finding mission to find out which end is which, now, most of our British fleeces are quite distinct in their crimp pattern for the breed, but also for uh, which end is which. So the majority of British fleeces are finer at the neck end and rougher at the, at the butt end. So if I look at this, there are a few other pointers as well. So the length of the staple changes from one end to the other how clean it is, how rough it is, the handle of the fleece changes as well. So the finer fleece, and this is the neck end up here, and this is the butt end down there. Now I can tell that because the fleece at that end has a different crimp pattern to this at the neck end. So the butt end, the crimp pattern tends to be wider apart in the crimps. It also tends to feel a little bit rougher and quite often it's a bit more dirty as well. So we can see from here that this end, if I take a, a staple out of here. So this is a staple from the butt end. And if I take a staple from this end, so this is the neck end. And you can see the neck end is very slightly shorter, but also the crimp pattern is much closer together. So I don't know if you can see that easily. And then compared to the butt end, which is not so well defined, a little bit wider in the crimp pattern. Now at the moment, because I've got rubber gloves on, I can't feel the difference with these, but it, actually you can see it quite distinctly with the eye that there is a difference in the quality and the actual coarseness of the wool. Now that to me makes a big difference uh, depends on what you want to do with your fleece at the end of the day and how you're going to prepare it and how uh, you're going to finish whatever it is you're going to make. So for some projects you might want something that's really soft and light and bouncy and for other projects you might want something that's a little less bouncy, say for weaving, with a little bit more robustness that might be a little bit more um, resistant to wear and the difference when you start spinning these things is quite marked as well so if you were to mix something with a high crimp with something with less of a crimp when you wash it the bounce back factor is different between the two fibers so your finer crimped wool will have a lot more stretch in it than your butt end wool which means that when you've washed it and dried it 
and you've blended the two together or even maybe done a singles of one and a singles of the other and plied them, you'll find that the, the, the more crimpy one will bounce back to itself more than the other one. So you'll end up with what looks a like, little bit like a boucle type of yarn where one is buckling around the other. So if you have that effect in your hand spun yarn, just have a think about how you actually graded your fleece out and whether or not you separated those distinct different crimp patterns from each other. So because this is a fairly long wool and I buy it specifically because I want to comb it, my whole aim for this is to separate out those bits which are very similar to each other Keep the rougher stuff aside for the minute. I mean, I say rougher stuff, it doesn't feel rough to the touch so much, but it's just that difference in the crimp factor and how much one is going to bounce against the other. So my first thing is to get rid of any vegetation. So anything that is really badly affected, and this fleece has got virtually none, I can't see any vegetation actually in it at all at the moment. And for me personally, the amount of time it takes to deal with a dirty vegetable matted fleece is not worth the effort for me. So I'm very particular about what I buy and I don't buy fleeces that have got vegetation in them. There are thousands of fleeces available to us, so why give yourself a, a problem in the first place? So I avoid any of that. Now the other thing that I'm going to do, is I'm just going to flip this over to the underside. Now this underside tells you whether or not the fleece has been clipped it in a good way so that the shearer hasn't gone over the sheep two or three times in one area because he's not gone deep enough the first time. So second cuts are uh, not a great thing to have in fleeces if there's a lot of them. If you have the odd one then it's not a problem you can pick them off. The other thing I'm looking for is uh, basically when the fleece has been on the sheep for slightly too long and the new growth has started coming through the old growth and then if it's only slightly through, you might just get a whole layer of very short wool on the top, which uh, you can then peel off. If it's been left for quite a long time too long, there's a good chance that that new coat will have grown into the old coat and it's very difficult to separate out. And it means when you come to prepare it, you've got to get rid of all of that short stuff before you've got into the decent quality um, top coat. So for me personally, I'm, I'm trying to cut down on the amount of work I have to do. So anything that's got double cuts or anything that's got a new growth coming through on the underside that is a little bit into the old coat, I'll reject that fleece in the first place. I won't even buy it. So this, this fleece cost me £30. And a lot of people think that's quite a lot of money for a fleece. You know, you can get one for a fibre. But to be honest, you get what you pay for sometimes. And... You know, these days people are desperate to sell the wool and sometimes they'll sell it really cheap for a good quality one and sometimes you've got to pay a lot of money for it. And I mean, I've paid up to £60 for a fleece because there was hardly any work left to do as far as grading it out was concerned. And uh, it, it was really just a matter of separating it for uh, washing and then combing. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do with this is separate off the finer stuff, that which has got a higher degree of crimp than the rest of it. Now in the old days, when the fleeces went to the wool board, they had loads of different grades of, of um, fleece within one, uh, within one sheep fleece. So the grader would separate it out into different big vats. So you might sort out 50 sheep fleeces, but each sheep fleece would be sorted into specific grades. So you might have a handful of one particular grade from 50 different fleeces in one vat and then they were graded out and sold off um, for the particular grade of, of uh, fleece. Because we're hand spinners, uh, the chances of us perhaps uh, grading that many fleeces is, is not a practical thing these days. And actually most of us just want to get on and do the spinning. But to be able to grade your own fleece means that you can separate out the good stuff from the not so good stuff. So instead of buying a top which has already been processed and which will have 
better quality mixed in with not so good quality because of the cost factor. We can be really ruthless with it and we can sort out just the bits that we want for specific projects. So the size of the fleece that you buy has a big bearing as well. Obviously, if you want to make something that's a fairly large project, then you need a fleece or a number of fleeces that can match each other to be able to make that project. So something like a Shetland, which might only weigh a pound, is not going to make you a big project. It might, if you're lucky, make a very fine sweater, but the chances of it making something much bigger like a colt is, is negligible. So from, from that point of view, this is quite a large fleece. And uh, for me personally, there's enough in here to do probably two good garments. So I'm going to separate out the neck fleece first. So what I generally do is take the center of the neck and I go down to the feet, down to the legs, which is this section here. And I'll take that little bit off because that's a little bit on the grubby side and it will take a little bit more washing. So I'll do the same on the other side. That's not too bad actually, it's been well skirted, so I'll leave that for the minute. So I'm looking at this bit. So this is the bit that has come from the top of the neck down to the shoulders. So this area here is where the shoulders would be. So I'm going to take this from about here and I'm looking at the crimp factor all the way through and I'm just going to separate this off at this point. So all of this fleece here is pretty much the same quality as far as crimp pattern goes and uh, length of wool as well. So I'll keep that to one side. And then I'm looking at the shoulder section. So the shoulders get quite a lot of weathering because they're sort of on the topmost along with the bottom. So this again is quite nice and crimpy but it's that little bit more coarse than the neck bit. So I'm going to track this down to what would be sort of behind its foreleg. And this is the belly down the edges. So the belly is quite often quite grubby. So I'm going to take this off here, all the way down this side. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side because that's where it meets underneath its tummy. So that goes with that pile. Now the middle bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this whole section from roughly the front of its leg, of its back leg that is, across the top to the other side in front of its back leg. I'm going to fold this in. Now prior to doing all of this, I had a good old feel of this with my rubber gloves on, uh, without my gloves on, sorry, so that I could actually feel the quality of the wool. And it's very difficult to feel that when you've got gloves on, obviously. So that's the first sort of middle section and the neck and the feet of uh, the legs at the front. So now we've got to the top of the back of it and over its bottom and down its back legs. So these are the back legs down here and a little bit of the bridge here, which is sort of undercarriage around its private parts. So we're just going to pull this off because this is a little bit on the grubby side and it's going to take a bit more washing than the rest of it. So I'll put that on one side. This is going to be the bit that comes over the top of its bum and halfway up its back. So I'm going to leave that intact and roll that up. So what I do with this now is I put them into separate bags and I label it. So this is going to be top of the bum to the middle of the back. This is going to be back legs and bridge. This is the sides of the belly. 
this is the shoulders and this is the neck and these little bits here are actually quite fine so I'm going to stick them in with the middle bit so this is just a very sort of rudimentary separating of the fleece now when I come round to actually preparing it I wash my wool by separating the locks so that I keep lock formation for combing so as I start to separate it if I come across a bit that feels a bit coarser than the rest or a little bit softer than the rest of the pile I'll put it back into a different pile with a, a similar wool so that's my very basic way of separating a fleece and uh, it's worked well for me for the last 30 years and I was taught by a, a chief wool grader so I've got pretty good idea of what I'm looking at now and it's only practice the more you do the better you'll be at it so that's it didn't take very long thank you